Hey guys, Chris Fate with Cheat the Game coming back at you. Today we're going to continue on with Back to Basics. And uh, this is basically for the newer people. I've uh, been keeping up with the series. You know that now we are on step number six. And, and going back and looking at the, uh, the trainer right here, the tutorial, we're doing the 64 bit version. When you get to step number six, uh, it starts talking about pointers and then all of a sudden in step seven it starts talking about code injection then goes to step number eight it talks about multi-level point, pointers so to me six and eight kind of need to be together I, I really feel that maybe step eight the multi-level pointer should have actually been step seven and step seven the code injection should have been step eight so that's the order we're going to do it in because I really want to keep these two together Okay, because they're basically doing the same things. One is just a little bit longer than the other. But today, we're going to be talking about pointers and multi-level pointers. Uh, we're going to talk about how we can find those, and we're going to be finding those manually. Okay, so what I wanted to do to talk about pointers now, pointers can get very confusing, especially if you are just learning. It can get very confusing and hard to understand but we're just going to get into just the basics of what pointers are and if you want to expand your knowledge about stuff you can go read for yourself after you get this basic core understanding okay and it gets a lot more technical and things like that and basically they have to do with how the memories are being allocated and the way things are stored in the system and how it accesses those stored values and that's where pointers come into play at so basically let's go ahead and bring up the tutorial now I know that we start the tutorial with Cheat Engine itself, but it's actually a separate running program. It's not Cheat Engine, it's just it's a separate running program. It's its own thing. So just imagine this when we're doing this series. Imagine this as being a separate game altogether. You're bringing up a game and then you brought up Cheat Engine and you want to attach it like that. So let's go ahead and do that. And I want to get to my bypasses and everything like that. But before we get to that, when you bring up your game or you bring up a piece of software like calculator or something the computer is going to assign that a specific place in memory it's going to assign all the opcodes and instructions to a location and store all the values uh, to its locations and everything like that and then that helps the thing to run the way it needs to run and then we get on with the game or whatever it is we're doing well, where, that's basically where pointers come into play at, is how it accesses its values and things that it needs to do its calculations with and things like that. What I want you to see is this right here. This is what we're going to talk about. Now, I'm coming over here to view and we're going to show module addresses. And this kind of follows along the same line. You remember when we were talking about like these registries and their offsets? you have not seen the beginning of the series we're picking up where we left off so you'll, you'll be lost if you haven't watched it and I told you right here like let's just concentrate on this particular set of instructions RAX comma RAX plus 60 it's getting ready to move a value right now the ad there's an address in RAX and it's pointing to an address that's like 60 hex bytes away from it Okay. the base address will always be in the registry that is always going to be the zero offset every time always and forever that'll always be ground zero okay think of it that way ground zero is the base address all right the disk the address that they're wanting to manipulate the value at is 60 hex bytes away from that base address now that's 60 in hex what is what is that in decimal? That'd be actually 96 bytes away. Okay, so got to remember this is talking about hex each and every time you see it. See that right there? But anyway, I'm not getting into this op code. That's not important. We're just talking about the address and what it's pointing to. We're talking about pointers. So we have the base address, and it's wanting to do something with the value that's at the address. That's 96 bytes away or heck, 60 bytes away. Remember, each byte is what the computer's reading. The computer only reads bytes. Now, I want to show you this down here, down in the memory dump. Take a look. 
this is the very start of the program okay this is where it was allocated to you see there's nothing above it right here at this address and that is the allocated spot for a 64-bit game software that we have running right it started allocating at this address. Usually a 32-bit, I think, is a 04000, something like that. I forget. It don't matter. But just remember, this right here, this byte right here is ground zero. All right? You can see over here, here is your offsets. You can see each byte has its own unique offset, which means it has its own unique address. This is address at ground zero, and address at ground zero is just the module. This right here, tutorial uh, dash 86 and that plus it's whatever, uh, .exe. It's just that right there. That is this address. That's the base. And all these offsets you see right here it's how far away it is from ground zero. So we'd have to go way, way down here to get to that spot in memory. Just remember that each byte has its own unique address. So anything that is away from the zero offset is one offset. That means that address is one, zero, 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 all the way to one. That's two, three, and on up like that. They're their own unique address. And the value that's being stored at that address are these bytes. Those are the values, okay? These are pointers. So it's always telling the system right here, I need this module address. Wherever you assign that in memory, I need you to influence this opcode, and it's located this many bytes away in hex away from the base source. It's pointing to this particular address which if we turn off the module, this is actually at this address. It is the base plus the offset, the distance away from it. And this is what's at that address, the SOP code. These are array of bytes right here. And remember, each byte has its own unique address. It just groups them together because they're part of the same instruction. Okay? We've already been over that. That was just a quick refresher. Now we're going to get into pointers all of these are pointers everything everything starting from the base address and it's pointing to when you see that with that offset it's saying I need this base address to point to this offset which is at this address which we can go to it like this down here in the memory dump copy we just come down here and go to address so now it says, okay, I come to here. You see it's that far away from the base source, okay? So you always have a base, you always have an offset. What you need to understand is the base and the offset, the distance away from that base, will forever and always, as long as you don't update anything, or update the software itself, will always be the same. If you keep that same software in your system every time you run it, all these op codes, all these values and registries plus their offsets, they're always going to be the same. Okay? Always. They're always going to be the same. The distance will always be the same. So, no matter what address that RAX is assigned to the next time you bring it up, which could be different, which is called a dynamic address, which we're going to talk about in just a second. No matter where that's assigned, the health will always be, well, let's just say this is talking about health here. The health will always be 60 hex bytes away from it every time, okay? So that's how we can get the computer to understand what address we're wanting, no matter what address it assigns health, okay? That's what a pointer is. All right, thanks, guys. And basically what I want you to get out of that is that the, the module address or the registry and the offset to the value you're looking for will always be the same. That is what we call static. It's never changing. It's not going to change. Okay? So whether it be to an opcode, which is the module plus its offset, will always be the same. It will always be the module, which is the base at zero, plus its offset represents that address, which will always be this instruction. Okay? To that instruction. Whichever one it happens to be. 
Also, same thing with the like a health value. Let's pretend like that RAX plus 60 is the health. Whatever RAX is here plus the 60 will always be what that health value is, regardless of what address it's assigned to. It will always be that distance away from the base address, which REX will always be holding the ground zero base address. Okay? So it'll always be 60 away from it. As long as you understand that, then you're starting to understand pointers and pointer paths. Okay? Because we know that 60 hex bytes away from it will always be our health. Every single time. So let's get it. Let's just go ahead and get into it right over here. I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, bypass this I, I was just trying to look it up one time before I hit record so I just wanted to uh, kind of go over in my head what I wanted to say about it so let's go ahead and click next and these are just the next buttons appearing let's get over to lesson six which is this right here and let's go ahead and find that value 100 and if you have cheat engine and you're watching this follow along with me do this with me okay because yours may be a little different than mine okay we're gonna find the uh, we're gonna find that pointer together you can see it right here but we don't want to trust that just in case and we're just gonna make sure and there we go so let's go ahead and add this to the list right here now first thing I want you to notice is that this is a black address that means it's a dynamic address so that means the next time I bring the game up or, or load up a new map and if this happens to be a game or something like that that address could possibly change however the pathway to this value will always be the same and this is what we're talking about here we're trying to find the paths that's being taken to the value or the ladder that's always used to get to that value regardless of where that hap that value happens to be in, okay? We're always going to be using that same ladder each and every time, okay? All right. So what we want to do is we want to see if there's an offset with this. We want to see the registry and the offset that's associated with that. And here's where, I, you know, things might get a little confusing for you, and I'll show you. All right, let's change the value, and it brings up everything that happened with that value when it was ran and how it changed and everything. Now, right quick, somebody had already asked me this. How did I know, looking at all this information, which one was the writing address and which one was the reading address? Well, just to know this, you know that by knowing that one principle, that whatever is on the right side is always affecting whatever is on the left side. So if our address is, all, is on the right side, and we know that whatever's being affected is on the left side, we know that that is a reading address. Our address, or our value at the address, is not being affected here. Where is it being affected? Right here. It's on the left-hand side. Remember, whatever's on the right affects whatever's on the left. EAX is changing the value of our address, which in this part of memory is being stored in RDX. You can see here that our address is being stored in RAX, but here it's being stored in RDX. The registries can change depending on what's going on in the program, wherever they happen to be at in memory. However, it's always going to be the same as far as whatever's assigned to it. So if it's RDX in this point in, in, uh, at this point in time in memory, it'll always be RDX at that location. And if it's RDX plus 2C, for our health in this part of memory it will always be rdx plus 2c in that part of memory it will always be this in this part of memory okay so uh, a registry depending on where it's at in memory these are different locations in memory they're not all just side by side that's just everything our value went through okay let's go to that part in memory and take a look at it this is where it was writing to it and you can see that this, they're not near each other at all, okay? They're not near each other at all. So at this point in time, in this part of memory, when it actually got down to it, our address was being stored in RDX. And the brackets around the address means that we're wanting the value manipulated, not the address, okay? 
okay? So EAX right here was changing the value to this new value, okay? <clears throat> and we can see that here in this little snippet, AB right here, RAX. RAX is the 32, or excuse me, 64-bit version of EAX, okay? So let's see here. Let's go to our hex calculator, put in AB. You can see that's 171. Let's take a look. Look at that. EAX was carrying our register, our value to our address. We wanted that change to that value. Okay. So right here, RDX is holding our address. And you can also see that right here. RDX, take a look. It's the same address. There is, there, it's at the zero offset. Okay. That's really RDX plus zero. Or just RDX. Okay. Now I know it gets a little confusing. Here's where it's going to start getting confusing. We want to bring this up more information here. And it just gives you all the information of everything the registries were holding at that point in time when that was run. Okay. This is what was going on in these registries. That's what each registry was holding. Okay. So we always want whatever the base address was. Even if this had an offset. We just want what the base address is. We want ground zero each and every time. And it'll even give you the best guess is probably the actual address, which is this right here, okay? You can do it this way, copy easy guess to clipboard, or you can come over here and just copy whatever's in RDX. We always want the base address to continue to find our path, okay? Always the base address. So we'd hit new scan and we're going to hit hex. We're going to put in that base address that was in RDX, which is our normal address. We want to see what is pointing to this address. There's got to be something pointing to it. There's got to be a static source somewhere in memory, whether it's going through many offsets or no offsets, that's pointing to that address. That's what we're trying to find. So let's do a first scan. And as you can see right away, we have a green address. A green address is a static address. That means it will always be this address each and every time. And if you take a look, what is that static address? Let me bring up a new notepad. You know that? It's our module plus this offset. It will always be that each and every time that is what is pointing to our address. This is the pathway it will always take. So this address can change all it wants to. However, it will always point to that address each and every time, this address here. And we can always find the value. But we look here and we say, well, that's not 171. That's because that's the address in its decimal form. Take a look. Let me, uh, let me copy down this address right here. Put in the address and go to its decimal form. <clears throat> Take a look. 176.07568. Now let's go back to our static address. What is it pointing to? See that? That's just our address in decimal form is all. And right here we got it showing as hex we can change it to decimal if we want to like that but it's 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 our address it's the same number as its hex value all right so we don't need this anymore so we're going to delete that record and i'm going to show you how to make it look locate the value here's where this came into play what was the offset at this right here that was zero offset zero is an actual offset by the way you have to count it, okay? So what we can do, we can do it one of two ways. <clears throat> we can do it like this, copy, come down here to pointer, put in your base, make sure that's a zero. Now if that had been RDX plus 10, we'd have to put plus 10 in there, okay? But it's at the zero offset and that points to the value, just like that. Okay, sorry about that. I wanted to save that part right quick. So let me get back to it. All right, so now we have that static address and that static address will always be the same and it will always at the zero offset be pointing to that value. 
this value right here, no matter what it changes to. Change it to 753, 753. 377, 377. Each and every time, it's going to be pointing to that value. So let's test that theory. Click OK. Let's put it back on decimal so I ain't confusing anybody. So there's just a regular value. Now, let me show you this right quick. I'm sorry. You can do this differently. Instead of using this pointer down here, that's the address, the static address plus the offset points to this address, this address plus zero. Uh, I'm sorry, this address is holding the value. We can also do it this way. Oh, let me uh, let me copy that back down. Control A, Control C, take off the pointer. Let's put back in the address, and you see here it now it's just showing the address. How do we get it to show the value of what this address is holding? Put brackets around it like this. There you go. You can do it either way. So really it's just plus zero, same thing. See that, plus zero. But you don't need the plus zero up here, however you do need it down here. But anyway, I don't want to confuse you, but it's just, that's how to get to the value. So let's test that theory. Each and every time, the next time I bring this up, this address is gonna change. I can change it now, look. Let me, uh. Nah, screw it. Just watch. That address is going to change. See that address change? Let's change it again. Boom. Changed again. But yet, it's still, no matter where it changes, it's still going to be pointing to the value. Each and every time I can change it, you can see here, it will always keep pointing to that value. I can even take it all the way down. Take it all the way down, bring it back up. Now let's go over to it. Let's uh, attach it back to your cheat engine. Let's go back over to it. We can get rid of it. Let's turn on and get back to step number six. And next, and next, and next. Change the value, and next. And now we're over here. Boom, take a look. You see it pop up? It found the address it was pointing to and found the value. Let's change the value. And it's still working. That's what pointers do. The pathway always stays the same. No matter how many times the dynamic address changes, it will always find it. That's pointers in a nutshell. Okay? So what the challenge is here is we want to freeze it to 5,000 and change the pointer. And we just kind of want to hang on this change value button to make the next button appear. Let's try it again. I don't know why it does that. There you go. There we go. Next. Alright, so the next button appears and then we're on step 7. And right here on step 7 you can see here it's going to start talking about code injection. To me that should be step 8. So for right now we're going to bypass it and we'll come back to it in the next lesson because step 8 is the same thing we just talked about except it's multi-level pointer. Now you can go through here and read all this and read what multi-level pointers are. It's just going through more offsets and addresses to get to the value. It's just a bigger ladder is all it is. Uh, the first one was just one little step ladder. We just use one step. Boom, that's it. Well, here we're going to be using multiple steps, but it's the same thing. It's doing the same thing, same function. Starts at a base source. All the offsets are going to be the same to that location of where the value is being stored. So I'm not going through all that again. It's the same definition, same everything. So we're just going to get to it and we're going to find the multi level pointer exactly the same way we did. We just have to do it a few more times. So. Okay? And that's why they should be together because they're dealing with the same topic and once you understand the core basics of that topic you understand it now like I say you can use the pointer scanner to find these things and that's what we recommend if you look on my channel got it hackings channel Stephen Chapman's channel all of them teach you how to generate pointer maps and do the pointer scan that's what we recommend if you are going to use pointers 
We basically recommend them as a last resort because some pointers can be unstable. And you can have more than one pointer path to the same value that are stable. Okay? That's where it gets confusing to you. But you can have hundreds of good pointers to the same value. You really can. But you'll get billions that are not good. Okay? So, like I say, you can go read up on stuff like that. I'm not getting into it. As long as you understand that the good pointer starts at a base source, it goes through a set of offsets that are pointing to addresses. As long as you understand those offsets are always going to be the same distance away from each one of, of each other, you're fine. Okay? So let me, uh, let me get rid of the step six address so I'm not confusing anybody because we're going to be cluttering this up with addresses. And I am going to be getting rid of these right here because all I want you to see is step eight. This is the very base source. I'm sorry. This is the address holding the value we're looking for. Let's change it just to make sure the value changed. So we do it the same way. And basically, we're just trying to find each rung back down to ground zero. Okay. Right now, we're standing on the very top of the ladder on the top shelf. Here's the cookie jar. Here's the cookie. That's the cookie jar, okay? Now we're needing to climb back down the ladder. That's what we're going to be doing. So let's go ahead and always use what accesses the address. That's what I recommend when looking for these things the manual way. All right, so we only get one opcode, and that's the writing opcode. How do I know that's the writing opcode? Because I know our, anything that's in the brackets is dealing with my address. We can see here, this is a little different. RSI is the base, but the value or the address holding the value we want is at the 18 offset, which is 18 away from the base, which will always be 18 away from that base each and every time, okay? So we need what's in RSI. Remember, we always want the base address. What we recommend also doing is go ahead and click the more button and bring up this information. It's just the same thing that you see down here. It's just this information down here. It's the same thing. It's just a little snippet of the place in memory and what each of the registries are holding at that time when the opcode was about to run. Okay? It's the same thing. But we recommend keeping this extra input. And these do come in handy later for other things. So you can go ahead and stop this and close that down as long as we have this information. Right now, we're only dealing with that base address in RSI. We will need that offset later. We just don't need it right now. We just need the base address. So we're going to have it copied down to easy guess. <coughs> Come back over here. Let's put on our hex. Let's first scan it. And we come to another address. And there's only one. Sometimes you can get hundreds. Keep that in mind. Usually it will be the smallest one that you want to try first and just go on down the list like that. So we just keep doing the same thing that we did last time. Remember that we're just keep going till we get to a static location that will always be pointing to the path we need. So but this is dynamic. That means that this address is going to change. What accesses it? We just keep going. We're just going to keep going doing the same things. Now we got two locations. We don't really have a writing opcode because it's always pointing to just an address. It's pointing to another address. So we can use either one as we can see that there are no offsets involved. We just need what's in our size. So I'm going to use this one. It's always best to use an opcode where it's on the left. Okay. As you get down here, and that's going to really get confusing because RSI is actually writing to RSI. It's not wanting to hold the address anymore. It's just wanting to hold the value in there. So we just want to keep it here. So right now, that's the address it's pointing to. We want to bring up more information, and we got to remember. Now we got two locations. That very top rung is the base address plus 18. The next rung down is just the registry plus zero. Plus the zero offset. Remember, if it's just by itself, that means zero. You will need that zero here in a minute. All right, so we can stop that. Close that on down. Stop this and close that on down. 
best not to have a bunch of debuggers running at the same time. So we want to copy best guess to clipboard. It's just whatever's in that RSI registry, which is our the address. So let's go ahead and we're going to see what's pointing to this address. A new scan, first scan. And trust me, if you're doing this in a game, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I have never actually done the manual method. I always use a pointer scanner. But if you're doing this in a game, you're going to get hundreds. And you may not get hardly anything. So it gets to be a real pain. And we just keep going down each one the same way. I'm not going to sit here and keep explaining the same thing over and over again. I think you get it now. Okay. And we can take a look over here. RSI plus 18 this time. We just need what's in RSI. Stop. And but we do need that 18 again later. And it's still dynamic. We haven't reached a static yet. So new scan. And another dynamic location. That's why it's a multi-level pointer. It's going through many different addresses to get to the value from its base source. And this is very common. This is very, very common. Step six ain't very common at all, especially in these 64-bit games and stuff. All right, so let's find out what's accessing this one. Change the value. Now we have RSI plus 10. Let's copy that address. Bring up more information because we need to remember that offset. And a lot of them uh, recommend that you write these offsets down i do it this way you know because these aren't going to it unless you master okay but if you want to get a notepad down make sure that you're writing down these offsets even if it's a zero offset make sure you write down that offset zero i'm going to show you why in just a minute all right so now we got this one so we just keep going until we get to a static source change the value all right stop plus two wait a minute that's the same one isn't it Okay, yeah, I, okay. I didn't look up the new one. So we need to copy this one. Alright, here we go. Oh, take a look. Now we reached, looks like, a static source, which is our module allocation location. Where the module is, finally. That'll be a static source. That'll always be the same. So now, look how many addresses it's going through to get to our value. Look at all that. It's going through each one of these to get to the value. Now, each of these addresses that you see, except for this one, but each of these addresses, next time we bring it up or change that pointer, these addresses are going to change. However, here's where our offsets come into play. Is the base address will not change, the static location, and all these offsets will not change. This is where we use our offsets. So let's bring up add address manually. Well, let's just double click this one. We need to copy down that base source. We can add address manually. Come down here to pointer. Paste in that base address. Now here's where our offsets come into play. Now we need to go back up to the value like that. So start from down here and go back up to where it reaches our value. Start set up space source. Now we got to make it go up the ladder to our value. Okay. So the first offset is 10. The next offset is 18. So we add offset 18. The next offset, there isn't one. Well, actually there is one. It is zero. And yes, you need that zero. Add offset, boom, zero. The next offset up, let's add that one, is 18. And guess what it points to? Our value. And there is a multi level pointer path to the value that will always, always be the same. This static address and these offsets that it goes through, no matter if these address change, will always be the same each and every time so we change the pointer you see that change bring that back up every one of those addresses changed but yet look where it's still pointing to 
It's still pointing to our value. Let's change the value, 16 or 6. Yeah. But you see the offsets did not change. However, the addresses did. That's the pathway. That's the ladder pathway. The rungs, or however you want to look at it, they will always remain the same. It will always be pointing to this value. Okay? And you can also do it the same way that we did the other one. It's just you got to put those in brackets. If you want to do it manually, you'll have to do it in Notepad. Or it's better to do it in Notepad so you can see what you're doing. You just do it this way, plus 10. Another bracket, plus 18. Oops, make sure put plus 18, another bracket. Plus zero, another bracket. And plus 18. Make sure you can't make sure you got the same number of brackets on each side open and closed. So we got one, two, three, four. We only have one over here, so we need three more. One, two, three. Copy that down. We can add address manually. Take a look. We can do it that way too. So either one of them does the same thing. As you can see, those offsets do not change. They'll always be the same. So let's see if we can get past this lesson. Change that to 5,000. Change the pointer. Like I said, I don't know why it does this. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. There it is. There's next, okay? And then that goes on to step nine. So uh, next lesson, we're going to be going over step seven, and that's code injection. We're going to talk about code injection versus AOB injection. Okay, there is a difference, but we'll cover that later. I want to thank you guys so much for coming out and supporting Cheat the Game. I hope you're getting something out of this. And uh, like I say, this does get a little complicated. It does get a little confusing. Hopefully you understand that. You'll probably rarely use pointers, but you need to understand them. And you need to understand what's going on with them. Understand how they operate with the offsets. And that's why we want to discuss offsets and base registries and things like that. Uh, as you can see, they do become very important later on. But... Uh, I want to thank my partners. Uh, these guys helped cheat the game keep going. If it wasn't for all these people, I would have closed this down a long time ago and just went on doing my job and everything. So I want to thank these guys so much that keep cheat the game running enabled me to come out with these tutorials. Keeps the site up, also keeps the Facebook and the Discord channel going. Thank you all. I want to thank all my men's and mods at these sites for helping me run. Uh, they do such a wonderful job. These are great guys and uh, they're very knowledgeable. And I want to thank all the game hackers that hang out there and help people. And uh, we got a lot of great game hackers that hang out at these channels. I want to thank you guys also. Y'all do a great job and uh, y'all answer a bunch of questions. Uh, y'all just keep the spirit of CTG going and everything. And also, I want to thank all you that come here to watch these videos, to learn from them and everything like that, or just to come to show your support. Uh, it couldn't be done without you. You are ever bit as much a CTG, and I thank you so much. We all thank you. All right, guys, I'm out of here. We will go over step seven next time around, which starts code injection. And then the next lesson after that, we'll be finishing up with step number nine in the 64-bit version. And that'll finish out our beginner series, and then we can get back into our normal game hacking. And hopefully everybody understands a little more, a little bit better what's going on around here, okay? All right, guys, I'll catch y'all later. Y'all take care. Keep on hacking. Most importantly, please enjoy yourself. That's really what it's all about. Cheat the game, fellas, because believe me, doesn't mind cheating you. You all take care now.